It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. While we want to delay sleepovers, we need to highlight that there are risks. And really, what this comes down to is talk to your kids. Just say, I know you want to have the sleepover. I know it's going to be really fun. But what are you going to do to stay safe? And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. One of my favourite things to do across the summer holidays with my friends when I was a teenager was have sleepovers. All the guys would come to my house and we would sleep over. Then we'd get up in the morning, catch the bus to the beach, go surfing. This is probably from about the age of 13, Kylie, maybe 14. Uh, And if it wasn't my place, it was Ben and Jay's auntie at Spoon Bay on the Central Coast. She had a house just down the road from the beach. We'd go and sleep over there. There'd be five or six of us in the rumpus room sleeping with, I don't know, like just sleeping on the carpet pretty much or on the couch. And first thing in the morning, we'd run down to the beach and go surfing. Sleepovers were... A huge part of my adolescent years. Don't think that I really had them very much, if at all, prior to my teen years, but just loved them. Sleepover as much of a part of your growing up? I do remember a handful. My earliest memory, I would have been about six. Wow. And my mum had my baby sister and I went and stayed with my auntie and all I remember is sleeping in my cousin, my boy cousin's bedroom with his blue wallpaper and his trucks up on the shelf and seeing the shadows of the trees um, swaying in the breeze and the, and the outdoor light. Spooky. It was very spooky. And I remember just staying awake for, mm. for half the night, scared, but too scared to say anything. Right. So when I was younger, I had sleepovers at my grandparents' houses. And, and I loved sleeping over at Nana Pop's house. Like, that was that was just the most awesome thing. But other than that, that was pretty much it. Nana Pop's place, and then as a teenager, uh, sleeping over with my mates before we went surfing. We'd camp out in the backyard. We'd pitch a tent, uh, go down to the shops, buy a whole lot of lollies. Hubba Bubba was my favourite. And we'd just chew gum all night and talk and then get up early in the morning and go surfing. No wonder you don't like gum these days. Oh, I can't stand this stuff. <laughs> Terrible. So... The conversation that we're having today about sleepovers is prompted by emails via podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Somebody wanted to know, what do you do about sleepovers, especially during the summer holidays, Christmas holidays? We've got all these family, friends, kids wanting to catch up with their friends from school, uh, neighbourhoods, camping stuff in the backyard. What do we do? How do we get this right? Are sleepovers okay or not? Over the last few years, there's been a lot of noise made on mummy blogs, on Instagram and social media about why so many parents are saying no. Kids cannot have sleepovers, not going to let it happen. The risks are too high. The rewards are essentially not worth the risk, not going to do it. Our approach, Kylie, has not necessarily been that. But at the outset, before we even begin this conversation, I want to highlight this is a hard one to respond to from a science-based perspective. So as a scientist, I always want to know what do the studies show. There's not really much research out there about kids and sleepovers. Uh, Research does show that there is risk associated with sleepovers. But for most of us who have lived through childhood and had the experience, we know that so long as it's safe, it's cool. Like, it's awesome. Yes, you eat too much sugar. Yes, you stay up way too late. Yes, you're a right off the next day and your parents wonder if they'll ever let you do it again. But it's so much fun to hang out with your friends late at night and... And so we're going to kind of try to thread this needle and talk about the pros and cons, the risks and rewards of sleepovers for kids at any age. Well, I think if we start at the really high end. The high end. The high end of the disasters that could possibly happen. Right. um, There there are definitely some safety concerns. Yes, without doubt. That you would want to allay before you would make a decision to let your child have a sleepover. And and I will never, ever minimise those concerns. And for those who have been affected uh, because of those concerns not being satisfied, devastating tragedy casts the longest shadow through the lives of people uh, who have been affected there. So the, the, the research does tell us that kids are most likely to be harmed by people known to them, and the younger they are, the greater the risk. So I think in harmony with yesterday's conversation about kids and alcohol, And there was one key word that was the very heart of our discussion. Delay, delay, delay. (laughs) Hold off. And and I think that there's some real wisdom there when it comes to kids and sleepovers, especially sleepovers with friends. Now, if you've got family members that you know are safe, whether it's grandma and grandpa or the auntie and uncle because they're going to catch up with their cousins, you, you obviously assess that 
as you need to, and you want to make sure that there's appropriate mixes of, or, or a lack of a mix perhaps of genders. You want to make sure that there's appropriate supervision, appropriate sleeping arrangements. But the and in our experience with the younger kids, it's actually been easier if Nan and Pop or Auntie and Uncle can actually come come and to our house, babysit. And we have a night off and have a sleepover at That's our right. house. Yeah. Kids are in the same hot, like environment, the safety and security in that their own bed, um, and Nan and Pop can kind of fall into the routine of the family as opposed to everything being turned up. But so it down. still feels like a sleepover because they're being looked after by someone different. That's right. Yeah, but but I think uh, in terms of advice, in terms of the conversation around this. Uh, so long as you know that the adults who are in charge are safe and that there are no other adults coming in that you don't know because that that's a real risk, right? You might send the kids off to someone's house for a sleepover, uh, even a relative's house, but they have a visitor either from down the road or from overseas or a family member or whoever it is. You don't know them. You don't know what their history is. Uh, we want to make sure that our kids are safe at all times. We need to know who's going to be there. And that also raises questions with young kids, even with family, should there be a bedtime? What's going to be the rule around screens? What kind of content and programming will the children be allowed to watch if there are going to be movies that are viewed? Uh, I mean, we've, Kylie, we've had our kids invited to sleepovers from the age of six or seven with school parties. And our general response has been, you know what, we'll just pick them up at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. Once, once it's late and they feel like they've had a great time, we'll pick them up and we'll drop them back the next morning. And obviously at that age, a nine o'clock or 10 o'clock bedtime is way beyond what we would normally mm, allow. Mm. So... It kind of we're we're meeting them halfway. We're saying no, we're not really you know comfortable with you having the sleepover. But you can have a late night. You can spend time with your friends, stay up late, eat your chocolate and ice cream Sundays or whatever it is you're going to do. Um, but we're going to have you home. Yeah. So I think the advice that we're sharing here is really helpful for kids. I'm going to say under about the age of ten maybe even eleven or twelve. It just depends on you and your family. When it comes to family, grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins. You want to know where they're going to be sleeping, how they're going to be safe, what programming, if any, and screens they're going to have access to. And, and, and essentially, you're looking after it from a family point of view by having those conversations with your parents or your siblings who are looking after them so they can have time with their cousins. When it comes to friends, our strong ex- uh, preference is the kids get dropped off but then they get picked up rather than having a sleepover until they're a lot older. And that's just because the older they are, the more of a voice they've got, the more they understand things like consent, they know what's right and wrong. Younger children, they're just more vulnerable and therefore they, I think they need a a high level of uh, oversight, a high level of uh, parental involvement. As kids get older though, the challenges shift. They become potentially a little bit more complex. We start to deal with issues of screens and phones, cyberbullying, uh, being on social media, the potential for sending images that may or may not be completely appropriate. Sneaking uh, out. Uh, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that one. Uh, and, and then picking up on yesterday's conversation, by the time they're 16, 17, 18, or maybe even a little bit younger, depending on the kids and the family and the environment, maybe even 14 or 15, there's also the issue of alcohol and other drugs. Uh, so I think at this point... And you've talked about all the big things, but mm. the reality is when you get a bunch of kids together and there's a lot of sugar and a lack of sleep, you've also just got the emotional, relational challenges that come with everybody being together. Your kids can kind of get nasty, can't they? Well, yeah. They, when you, you get that hangry, <laughs> angry... You know what else they do? They do really dumb things. Now, this is kind of harmless, but I remember at one sleepover at my house. So my mum used to go shopping and she would buy stuff in bulk i guess it's kind of a little bit like um what's the name of the uh, like costco you know how you can buy stuff in bulk so mum would mum would go shopping and we had a sleepover one night it was, i reckon it was about 11 o'clock at night we were all still awake and one of the guys was like oh i'm really hungry so we opened up the pantry and in our house we actually had like a walk-in pantry it was quite quite sizable i don't know how this happened but one of the guys saw our a two-litre bottle of chocolate topping. Two litres of chocolate topping on one of the shelves. Uh, his name was Aaron, and Aaron's like, oh, chocolate topping, we should do a milk cha- milkshake. And somehow one of the guys said, hey, I dare you to drink the chocolate topping. And we all said we'd pay him five bucks if he could drink the top chocolate topping. So he tried to drink two litres <laughs> That is disgusting. He just literally put the bottle to his mouth and started sculling this chocolate topping, like Cotty's thick and rich. I, I cannot imagine how much sugar went into his system. I reckon he drank about a litre of it. Just pure 
I'm assuming it didn't stay down for long. Uh, he kept it in. But what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every time he burped, the whole room just smelled <laughs> like chocolate. It was disgusting. It was so bad. So there's, there's also just the dumb things. Um, I mean, I don't know if well, I should I say Well, I was the victim not- of a peanut butter face. Uh, oh, really? At, oh, yes, of course. At one of my sleepovers. So I was fun. always the one to fall asleep before everybody else. And we used to do the shaving cream. Put the shaving cream on their face, and then they'd and then tickle them, and they'd slap their face and put shaving cream everywhere. I don't know if you did that one. So I, someone painted your face with peanut butter. They did. That's brilliant. They did. Stuck my hand in water, hoping that I'd wet my bed. <laughs> right. We did nudie runs. Yeah. That, that's a boy thing. Skinny Boys, dipping. Honestly. Skinny dipping. Yeah. Uh, so so there's all those kinds of things as well. And in the age of social media and telephones and cameras everywhere, some of those things which we would look back to the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s as harmless fun, uh, in 2022, 2023, not quite so harmless, could actually get you in a whole lot of trouble because the world's changed and there are cameras everywhere. So I think... While we want to delay sleepovers, we need to highlight that there are risks. And really, what this comes down to is talk to your kids. Just say, I know you want to have the sleepover. I know it's going to be really fun. But what are you going to do to stay safe? What are you going to do if the boys or the girls or whoever it is you're hanging out with start looking at imagery that is explicit and vulgar and coarse and inappropriate? How are you going to deal with that? Or what happens if someone wants to play truth or dare, and you find yourself in a situation where you're feeling pressured to behave in ways that, that are inconsistent with what we've taught you. Having those conversations, I guess giving them a dry run before they get there, can be super important for keeping them safe and actually facilitating their ability to have a, a good time. This reminds me of the conversation we had recently about um, – introducing mobile phones to our kids. Yeah, so that was last Monday. And while the research, there isn't a lot of research around sleepovers, I'm going to suggest that this is going to be a conversation similar to mobile phones. I think that parents are pretty conscientious in making decisions to help keep their children safe. And so there, there isn't going to be a arbitrary age that we say this is, this is, you know, okay, this is great. Mm -hmm. It really is going to come down to each individual family's needs and their children and and who they are, their personalities and their developmental level as opposed to their age. So let me ask you a couple of quick questions, just yes or no. Number one, should there be a bedtime for sleepovers? Yes, 100%. And what time should that be? That's up to the individual family. (laughs) Okay. uh, But, But I think... I think the reality is they're probably not going to listen to you, but you can definitely have an expectation. But when we've had sleepovers at our place, we've just gone to the kids and said, you know what, guys, it's bedtime. We're going to bed. We expect that you're going to go to bed, but we're also not silly. We know you're probably going to stay up. So if you do, the expectation is, number one, you stay quiet. Number two, there are no screens. And number three, you be nice. And, and then we've kind of just gone to bed because kids, right? So, so there's, there's that. Next question for you. If you're dropping your kids off to a friend's place for a sleep, should you talk to other parents about your um, your values, your expectations around the sleepover? Um, I would be having that conversation before I even drop them off. For me, my number one rule is these are people that I know well. These are people that I've spent time with and I've spent time with in their home. Mm. We've had conversations around the kinds of things that I allow my children to do already. And so the conversation that I'm then having with them in the lead up to a sleepover is just kind of reiterating, just checking in. Kids said they're going to be watching a movie tonight. Um, Do you know what they're watching? Um, We don't let our children watch anything over a PG or whatever, whatever it is. Okay. So last question for you, sleepovers, good idea or bad idea? context matters <laughs> okay if i want to have a night away with you they're amazing right <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say they're a great idea so long as you know the people you've had good conversations with your child and your child knows that you are available at any time under any circumstances if they're concerned worried or need to come home even if that means that you've got to get in the car and drive across town in the middle of the night i think for us the biggest thing is just follow your gut yeah nice one you know, nice one. You, you might you might know people well, but there's there's just a niggle that you've got, and you need to go with it. Maybe you're wrong, but you'd rather be wrong with this than wrong on the other end. Yeah, safety is everything. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. If you'd like more info about making your family happy, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. dot